Welcome to Ignite Agility. Today, Angela is going to share a story of they asked for a bagel, but really wanted a bun. Trust us, there is some scrummy and agile stuff in there, so stay tuned. We will have some practical advice. So, Angela, what's this all about? Years ago, I mean, I'm talking mid to late 90s, when I was still doing database work, I would call on all kinds of different companies to help them convert databases. And the company that supplied McDonald's with all their buns at the time was headquartered in Chicago. And they would make the Big Mac buns, the Quarter Pounder buns, even the um, Egg McMuffin uh, English muffins. Because Ray Kroc, the founder of McDonald's, had a deal with the founder of this bakery. So there was a long-standing agreement. Well, McDonald's wanted a breakfast sandwich that was a bagel to capitalize on the popularity of bagels at the time. And so, Is that of course, the McGriddle? Was that the McGriddle? No, that was okay. different. Um, but the, the bakery was asked then to come up with the bagel for this new breakfast sandwich. And the leader that I was working with at the time was just really upset because every iteration of the bagel that they put in front of McDonald's was rejected. Too chewy, too hard, too big, too, too whatever, right? Just all this feedback. And finally, they said, we have no choice but to award the business to Sarah Lee because they came up with what we wanted. You weren't able to do it. So I was talking to the leader about it, and he was very emotional because he went to McDonald's when it was live and had one of them. And he's like, you know what it is? It's a freaking bun <laughs> that looks like a bagel. He goes, if they had just told me, hey, we want to call it a bagel, but it's really got to be a bun. It's really got to be light and fluffy and just look like a bagel. He goes, we would have done that. Why didn't they just be honest? Why didn't they just ask for what they really wanted? Because nobody does it like Sarah Lee, of course. I had to get that in there. <laughs> so so how does this relate to what we're uh, talking to you today about? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> because how many times have people been asked to go agile and they get sent to training to become a scrum master? You used to be called project manager, but now we're going to call you scrum master. Only to learn that the company doesn't want to change at all. They still want the person to act like a project manager, but they want to call them a scrum master now. Or worse, somebody's looking for a job. They have this scrum master job description that they answer. They go through the whole interview process and they get hired. They get in there and whoopsie. No, we really don't want a scrum master at all. We want you to just act like a project manager, but we're going to call you a scrum master. So if they just want a bun, ask for a freaking bun. Yeah. Why are you asking for a bagel? If you just want a project manager, there is nothing wrong There's with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But be honest about it. Exactly. So why is it that we're so afraid to call something what it is? Uh, teaching a class earlier this week and same thing. It's, it's someone said, I'm so glad to hear you say that because we got into that discussion and I'm like, I don't know. Is is it FOMO that companies feel that they have to use? Fear of latest? missing out. When he says FOMO, he's FOMO. trying to sound cool. He means I fear of missing out. I just used an acronym that I heard the mm -hmm. other day. So my kids are teaching me. Anyway, uh, is it because we have to be sounding relevant and sounding current? And, you know, I, I just asked the class, do your customers care what you do for work or how you do your work so long as your work is valuable to them? They don't. I, I don't get it. And and you're you're spot on with being honest. This is what we do here. This is how we do it here. We need people who can do this. And I asked the question to one of our clients who shall remain nameless to protect the guilty. <clears throat> um, I said, why are you saying that you're using Agile and Scrum when it's pretty obvious from our assessment, it's pretty obvious from our conversations that you aren't, in fact, interested in changing. And what this man said to me is, we need to be able to hire. And I said, well, tell me more about that. How does that work? Well, just, I think it's what you said. He's like, well, mm, agile is the buzzword, scrum's the buzzword. We can't attract talent unless we say we're working this way. And I said, but that's going to backfire on you. That's bait and switch. It is bait and switch. Because if they get in here based on that promise and find out, psych, 
we're really just doing waterfall. We're really just doing project management. They're not going to stay. No. This is the age of quiet quitting or just flat out quitting, right. quitting the great resignation. They're not going to stay. And now your reputation, because we know who those companies are, especially right. in Minnesota, because the community here is small. They have a reputation for not really doing any of this. I've even told some of our graduates, hey, you know, because they're so worried. They're like, how do I get Scrum Master on my resume? I don't I don't have any experience and I really want to do this. I will literally tell them to go to some of these companies that have a bad reputation. And if they say to me, well, no, they have a reputation for not really doing this. And I said, exactly. Because there's a 49% turnover rate yeah. at one of those companies. Yeah. So they're going to hire you with a pulse and a CSM. Yep. And you'll get six months, a year, two years of experience with the title Scrum Master. And then so what if you leave? Clearly, nobody in this community is going to fault you for having worked at that right. company who's already got the trash reputation because all they know is people don't stay, people leave, right? There's there's this revolving door. But then what another one of those graduates told me who did it, because they texted me, they're like, oh my God, you were right, they hired me. You know? <laughs> and um, so I'm like, okay, yeah, okay, tell me how it goes. And so after a year, they left, but what they said was so freeing was because that company doesn't really want to do any of this, they felt free to experiment. Oh. They knew they weren't going to fail. Right. Because there, there really were no consequences. Now, the sad thing is what you brought up about consumers. Because how many times as a consumer, if it's a poor result, you vote with your wallet. You go somewhere else. And your feet, and then you get on social media and bad mouth those and, companies. You know, the other thing I was going to add is, you know, it sounds like we're, we're, you know, we're working the system a little bit, but yeah, it's the reality that some of the things are in. Uh, Don't hate I'm, the player, hate the game. Right. The other thing uh, I hadn't thought of, so I appreciate you sharing that, how they were free to try stuff. I was going to add that, you know, it's, it's experience. And you were the one that told it to me. It's like, don't discredit your experience, good or bad. And even if you're in places that really are struggling with this way of work, you're getting some pretty good pretty good experience there to help you when you go somewhere else. Uh, the other thing I was going to bring up is, you know, so they send you to a class and even when the teams and the companies are truly trying to do this, there's still confusion because there's so much noise out there. There's how many different classes, how many different flavors. So if they send you to a class, that's not the flavor you're doing back at work. It causes confusion in the class, but it also compounds that if they're sending you to a class, like you said, for a position that's really not going to be using any of this. So why are you spending the money to train me? And we, we do that in our classes. We actually say, don't go back and fight. If you've got the relationship, go back and talk to the people who are sending you to the training and ask, what is it you hope for us to get from this training? Because I'm learning stuff in this training that things we are definitely not doing that are supposed to be a part of this game called Scrum. We're playing a different game. What do we want to do with this? How do we come back without sounding we've, you know, drank the Kool-Aid? Oh, I hate that analogy. I know. <clears throat> you know what happened to the people who drank yeah, the Kool-Aid? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't like that analogy. Jim Jones. Bad guy. <laughs> Stop. Bad guy. Too soon. Bad. So that's getting us into the practical advice part yeah, of this. Yeah, what do you do? Because whether you've achieved the CSM, which is just your driver's license, your certified scrum master, or you've got experience under your belt as an advanced CSM. And I would think that people who are an advanced CSM at that point really should have no problem exhibiting the kind of courage we're going to be talking about because <clears throat> one of the scrum values is courage. And then at the highest level, certified scrum professional, somebody who has the two years of experience, maybe they're a little bit more discerning in the jobs that they take, but also maybe they're a little bit more forgiving because sometimes people will say, I want to go where they're doing this all perfectly. It's like, well, wait a minute. There's Are no they even hiring if they're doing that? They're not going to be hiring <laughs> and there's no such thing as is, perfect. This is, is about continuous improvement. So if you're listening to this and going, holy crap, <clears throat> I am in that situation right now. I feel like I'm being asked to, to be a bagel, but they really want a bun. I feel like they're just doing scrum and name only, but they just want a project manager. 
Well, you can stay mm-hmm. and do nothing. Yeah. I mean, you can smile and nod. Everybody's got to eat. You can smile and nod and play along, but maybe that does lead to some of that quiet quitting or maybe quitting, quitting. <clears throat> but if you quit, how are you going to know that the next place that you go to isn't doing exactly yeah. the same thing? There's no guarantee. Because I've heard that from so many graduates, you know, out of the frying pan into the fire, they go someplace and they're like, it's the exact same thing. I'm just, you know, same problem, different company. The second thing you can do is you can stay and try and change it, but that is going to require courage and and patience and work because if scrum masters aren't willing to do the work, it's not going to work. Exactly. So to do exactly what you were saying, hey, I came back from this training class that you sent me to and I am thoroughly confused. What, What do you want us to do with this? I want to meet company goals. But I just don't know what that is. Right. You're saying a lot of this, doing a lot of something else. Yeah. That's the confusion. I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be a good employee. I'm trying to do what you want us to do or in the way you want us to do it. But it just doesn't, it's not lining up. So that's the courage. That's a conversation. And that I'm glad you said patience because, you know, calling myself a recovering perfectionist helps me get over it because uh, I wanted to do this and I wanted to do it right out of the gate. And that's not how this works. No such thing. Right, right, wrong, bad, good. You just, you are where you are. Mm -hmm. And if you can have those conversations to say, hey, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Do you understand the confusion we have? And if there's confusion, do you think stuff's getting done? It's not. The third thing you can do, of course, is leave. Everybody has the gift of free will. Uh, Vote with your feet. You can't change your company. You can change your company. And sometimes people get hung up on, well, I don't want to have that many jumps on my resume. That is such a thing of the past, right? People are not staying 10 years, 20 years, 30 years with a company anymore. They used to, different generations, that was a thing, but not in 2024 and beyond. That's just not what we're seeing. But if you do leave, how do you prevent being in the exact same situation? Sounds good. They're asking me to be a bagel. This this scrum master job description just looks great. You're going to have to get past the talent acquisition person or the screener to be able to ask the really tough questions of a hiring manager or somebody that's responsible for the agile or scrum adoption. Ask the really tough questions there. The talent acquisition person is not going to know if you say, Why are you doing Scrum? What do you hope to gain by making this change? Whose version of Scrum are you following? Safes, PMI, the official version. What what are we doing here? What's expected of me? Um, Can I see, can I talk to some of the team members that I would be responsible for coaching? Are you in component teams? Are you in feature teams? How often do you release? I mean, you can ask all those telling questions of an actual hiring manager save those though don't don't hit the talent acquisition person up with all those because chances are they they simply don't know they've just been asked to go get a bagel or they, or you might scare you might they might be scared off and want to go to somebody else who doesn't ask those tough questions right so right so in recap you can stay and do nothing smile and nod you can also stay and ask the question Obviously, with respect, with courage, with patience, let them know you're confused or you can leave. But in leaving, make sure that you're able to, like she said, get to the people that when you look for a job, can you ask those questions of the people who are owning this, not just the talent, not the talent acquisition, but the person who's hiring and see what they say. And it doesn't mean they have to answer your questions 100 percent. Uh, the fact that they can entertain them and let you know where they're at, that's, you know, you're, you're trying to find a level of maturity that you're willing to be a part of. Well, thank you for letting me share my bagel story with yes. you today. I, I was wondering where it was going, but I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Awesome. That was fantastic. Really? Oh, my God. He didn't, like, get after me for my resting bitch face. He didn't get after me for my... <laughs> Did awesome. That's a, that, I'm gonna like first sniff, try. Snip the beginning off of that, and the next go right out.